hours and years. Problem solved or problem just beginning. Remember what I said, they're essential nutrients. You have to get them in your diet. If you don't, your body has to end up overworking. And what happens to anything that overworks? It breaks down. So what I want you to keep in mind is that empty bucket when a child is born, and now we need nutrients, proper nutrients, we need to digest those nutrients so they're absorbed and utilized to fill up that bucket. So enzymes are considered to be the workers of the body. If I was to build a house, I would get all the raw materials, dump them on one, and now I'd have to call the workers to screw, hammer, and nail things together. Without food enzymes, we do not get the house built. And there is no nutritional supplement to take the place of food enzymes. So let's talk about women's nutrition. An infant is born, male or female, it does not matter. That infant needs protein, and they want to get that protein from either breast milk or formula. Somewhere they've got to get high-density protein. The reason why they need protein is because everything is forming. Their eye tissue, their brain tissue, their bones, their muscles. And the protein is also used to manufacture enzymes that are going to end up doing the work down the road. The protein is very, very important. But I want you to think about this for a second. What would happen if that little baby did not fill their bucket enough in this stage of development? And now the child grows. And what happens is they start the roller coaster ride. So that infant did not get the enough protein and enough nutrients to start to fill that bucket. That baby's going to deal with constipation. That baby's going to deal with ear infections, edema, colicky. That baby's going to have crying spells. They're going to be very irritable, and they're going to vomit. Now, we're all old enough to either have had kids or know of kids. And I'm sure that we've dealt with kids that have been on this list. And that's where it starts. You know, ear infections are not a normal thing of childhood. Colic is not a normal thing of childhood. When you get these symptoms, these are an indication that something has gone awry. So the roller coaster ride begins. And now that child grows and it becomes a toddler and to an adolescent. And what happens now is their nutrition changes from the standpoint that they need even more nutrition than an adult. Because now what's happening is everything is really starting to take off in growth and development. And now it's important, it's imperative that along with the protein, minerals are added to the mix. Because these are going to be vital to their growth and development in this stage of life. But I've got a question. Think back again. Empty bucket. Child born. Got to fill that bucket. What happens if that child doesn't fill the bucket enough in this stage of growth and development? They go on a roller coaster ride. And now what happens is not only do they get constipated, but now we start to see childhood asthmas around five years old. Now we start to see type 2 diabetes around five to seven years old. Now we start to get irritable bowel. We get constant gas and we get anxiety built in, that separation anxiety. The roller coaster ride. And then we go into adulthood. So if that child did not fill the bucket, and now they go into adulthood, that woman will typically play catch-up ball her entire life. This is a challenge. This is a challenge from the get-go, because now as an adult, they have more demands per ton. They have work. They have relationship, they have everything going on. And now, if she wants to have a baby, now we got a real nutritional drain. Think of that bucket. If that bucket was not filled and now she wants to get pregnant, could that be why infertility is such a big, widespread thing to make? So what we recommend in our office is that if patients are considering having children, that they start to get the nutritional house in order a year in advance. And the reason why we say that, both male and female, the reason why we say that is because, again, a woman is playing catch-up her entire life. So now in adulthood, what happens is a woman needs fat, protein, and carbohydrate for energy, growth, and repair. But now they really need to add in calcium and phosphorus because this is where bone protection comes into play. But my question is, what happens if a woman doesn't fill their bucket enough or if now that they're older, they're starting to make withdrawals out of that bucket. 
out of a depleted bucket already. So now what happens is we go into adulthood and now we develop adult-oriented problems. So now that, that gas and colic stuff that was happening when the baby was small, now that mushrooms into gallbladder problems. As a matter of fact, clinically, we talk about FFF, female, fat, fertile, and 40. Those are the signs and indicators of gallbladder problems. So gallbladder problems typically hit women in their 40s. Now we deal with constipation. This is lifelong for many, many women. We deal with edema. All of a sudden, we start to retain water. We deal with cold hands and feet, just can't seem to get warm. Adrenal exhaustion. We see this as fatigue. We see this as an inability to sleep well. They fall asleep okay, but they wake up in the middle of the night. And we see this at times as heart starting to flutter. Hormonal imbalances. Well, many of you women live the dream. We have patients that we've seen in the office, you know, Jekyll and Hyde, three weeks or a week before their period, you know, you don't know that person. And then they get their period, totally different. We start off with osteoporosis and hot flashes, heartburn. We start off with irritability and anxiety, crying spells, headaches, inability to lose weight. That's a biggie in adults because protein, if you don't have enough in that bucket, it modulates thyroid and weight problems. How many women go through thyroid problems throughout their life that they just can't get it figured out? And then we go into depression and indigestion. So it's very challenging for a woman because again, the thing that I want to stress is that most women struggle their entire life to fill up that bucket. And then we go into older women. Well, older women need even more minerals. Older women need protein also, but here's the challenge. Once we pass the age of 40, physiologically, we don't digest protein as well as we did. And every year we get older, what happens is we protein less and less. We process less and less protein effectively. So that's why osteoporosis hits older women typically than younger women. Yes, it can happen in younger women. But when it happens in younger women, it's typically induced by steroid usage in asthmatics or steroid usage in fibromyalgia. But the normal, quote, aging process of osteoporosis happens because a woman can take all the calcium she wants, all the vitamin D and manganese, but if you don't have the protein content because your bucket was depleted or you've made excess withdrawals, it becomes a problem. So now we go into the major symptoms of an older female. And they have all those things on there, but then we add diabetes to the mix, we add dementia to the mix, we add osteoporosis to the mix, and they still struggle trying to get their thyroid regulated. So let's talk about protein. Sources of protein are meat, fish, legumes, tofu. And protein is used for growth and repair. Bone. Protein carries the calcium to the bone. It's dealing with the formation of very, very important chemicals. Thyroid hormones, hemoglobin. Women typically are anemic, not because you get your period once a month, but typically iron is produced or carried by protein. If you don't have enough protein in your bucket or if you've made excess withdrawals, you got it. Antibody formation. Acid-base balance starts to retain water. Removal of toxic compounds. Women are fatigued always. As they start to get more and more stress on them, they just get more and more fatigued as a result. So protein is really, really important. But it is not eating protein. I don't want you to go home and eat a cow. That's not the objective here. The objective is it's not what you eat, but it's how well you're digesting it. And one of the indicators you can see is if you have a protein deficiency, is you can go ahead and palpate your jaw muscles. These are called the masseter muscles. When you're not getting enough protein or you're not digesting enough protein, those masseter muscles will go into spasm. You'll feel tenderness or an actual knot. Also, two inches underneath your belly button. You have to do this lying down. But if you press in and up to the head, if you feel tenderness in there, that's a key indicator that you are not digesting enough protein. Number two, protein deficiency typically occurs at puberty and occurs all through life. That's a very, very important point that I missed. Again, I want you to think of that bucket. And what happens at puberty is that's where the hormonal shift changes. 
That's where hormones are really needed for production. So what happens is, that's where the body is going to suck up all that protein and fat in order to manufacture hormones. And that's typically where the depletion starts. Because as infants, we typically you know, do okay. And then as more stresses and demands are laid upon us, that's where the body starts to go the other way. Very, very important. You know, protein is the bus that carries calcium to the tissue. So if we think about osteoporosis, what's the common treatment for osteoporosis? Take a thousand milligrams of calcium, take your vitamin D, throw some magnesium in there, do some weight bearing exercises, God bless you, prevent osteoporosis. Terrific. But we don't take into account the protein content. We don't take into account that just because we stick it in our face can we automatically digest it and utilize it. So the relationship between calcium and protein is vital. If you're not digesting enough protein, then your calcium levels are automatically going to be diminished. You can take all the calcium you want, but if there's not enough of a bus to carry it, you're going to have a problem. Phosphorus. Phosphorus is important for bone. We forget about that part when we talk about osteoporosis. But phosphorus and calcium are inversely proportional, which means if you don't have enough calcium, your phosphorus is going to rise. And if your phosphorus lowers, your calcium is going to rise. But they have to be in a proportion of 2.5 to 1. If that proportion drops, what happens now is you don't get the bone mass and the bone density that you're looking to achieve. Iron. Iron is completely dependent upon protein. So when you go to the doctor and they say, oh my goodness, you're anemic, Mrs. Patient, you know, go get some iron. It's great, but if you don't have the protein to carry it, it's not going to do anything but constipate you even more. And so, why do you think women change? their hair texture changes. It goes from soft and silky when we're younger to more firm and more brittle as we get older. Besides wrinkles, okay, as a fact of getting older, skin changes, skin tone changes, skin texture changes. The reason it changes is because we start to deplete the sulfur out of our body. And sulfur is responsible for the smoothness, for the texture, for the luster of our hair of our skin, of our nails. This is why we get these changes when we're older, because again, if we didn't fill up that bucket to start with, or if we're making too many withdrawals, Houston, we got a problem. So, how do we do it in America? We do it by drugs. It amazes me that in a country that just says no, we say yes at every turn. And please do not think that I'm medicine bashing, I'm not, and I'm not anti-medicine. What I am saying to you is that we need to think about safe and natural first. And if we need medication, thank God it's there and utilize it. But do things that are going to be health oriented also. Because every medication needs to be detoxified by your liver, by your kidneys, by your spleen. And you need to do things that are going to shore them up nutritionally. So what happens is drugs are prescribed. As a matter of fact, America consumes more than half the drugs that are produced in the entire world. On average, there are 29 different drugs in a U.S. family's medicine cabinet. So let's talk about hot flashes. What do we do for hot flashes? Well, medically, what they do is they recommend hormone replacement therapy. The only problem is hormone replacement therapy doesn't work. The German American Medical Association